lack in our lives, but he has, he has told us several things um, that we, we need to do to eliminate that lack. First of all, he said, if we tithe, he would rebuke the hand of the devourer. Amen? And he said, if you don't tithe, I'll, I'll cut a hole in your pocket. Okay, so our sins can hold us back. Um, this, oh, say, the same with disobedience. He told uh, the children of Israel that I'll take the blessing that I've spoken over you and I'll turn it into a curse. You know, if you disobey me, don't, because sometimes, you know, we think we're over the hump. You know, it's like, all right, I made, I'm over the hump now. And God is like, oh, no, 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 no. I, I can turn that thing around. Don't get too cute. Don't get too excited and forget. The point is obedience. Okay? So we're going to talk about overcoming life's challenging, uh, life-challenging sins. You know, I think that is one thing for us to realize, um, number one, that, that God hates sin, and number two, that we have sin in our lives, but it's another thing to know how to get rid of it. Because we get caught and trapped in these cycles. And we do good for, you know, we, we'll leave here tonight and say, all right, you know, I'm getting that out of my life. And we'll do good for a minute. But then we'll fall right back into that thing. The, you know, the same way as uh, other positive things we say that we want to establish certain patterns and behaviors in our life. And we'll, we'll do well until we bre break that stride. You know, a, a lot of times um, I'll, I'll be cleaning or whatever, and, you know, I'm at that age now where I have to wait for that burst of energy. You know, you, you sit there and you wait for it to hit you. Oh, okay, I can do something today, you know. And, and so I'll, I'll, I'll be in my flow, and then a, a, a good friend will call or something. Hey, girl, would you look, I can't talk to you now because if, if I do, it'll break my stride. And I'll be back there sitting again, waiting for that energy to come back through. You know, and sometimes that's how it is, I believe, in our lives when we talk about sin. You know, we'll, we'll be in a stride and we'll be doing well, and then something will happen and break that flow, and then we end up tumbling back down and, and even going lower than we were when we started. Amen? Okay, so... Um, on your handout, uh, page six, you do not have to be controlled by sin. S since sin's power has been broken in the believer's life through the Lord Jesus Christ, relying solely on God's resources, you can be more than a conqueror in Jesus Christ, even in the areas in which you have been enslaved to sin for a very long time. Remember the man who was seated at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years? I'm sure that people were looking at him and saying, I don't know why Jesus is talking to him. He's been like that for such a long time. And that's what the enemy will tell you. He will tell you, why, what, you know, why are you thinking about changing? You know, why are you thinking about getting up out of this? You've been in that mess for so long. You may as well just give it a rest and forget about it. But God lets us know through his word, it doesn't matter how long you've been in a situation. He is able to bring you out of it. You know, have you ever um, um, wanted to do something or, or, or uh, been in a situation and then when you came out of it, you wondered, you know, why didn't I do that sooner? You know, why, why did it take me so long? Whether it was being bound by fear or being bound, you know, uh, uh, by a, a lack of faith or whatever. But once you overcame that hurdle, you, you said, wow, I could have done this so long ago. And that's how it, it can be with sin as well. Romans, the sixth chapter. And um, those of you who are online, we welcome you. And if you would like a copy of the handout, all you have to do on the section where you have the chat, 
um, a capability. Uh, they're sitting in the media room waiting to hear from you. If you would like the handout, please email your, uh, I'm sorry, chat them your email address, and we'll make sure first thing in the morning that you will get a copy of the handout to keep in your records. Um, also, if you have a question, just chat it, and they will get it to me, and I will address your questions as well. Okay, so let's look at where? Romans, the fifth chapter, I'm um, sixth chapter, beginning at verse five. You all there? I haven't learned how to talk and turn pages at the same time, so. Okay, Romans the sixth chapter, verses five through seven. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we shall not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. And it's not talking about... Um, uh, it's talking about what, who we become in the spirit. When we accept the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, we become empowered by his Holy Spirit, and we become free from the presence, the penalty, and the power of sin. We have the ability to say no to our flesh, Forget the devil. A lot of times we're blaming him when it's just us. Amen. Remember, that's what discernment is, knowing the source of a thing. Is it God? Is it, is it a me? Or is it satanic? And so when we are free from sin, we're free from the power of sin in our lives. We can no longer be held hostage except that we want to be. So we consciously decide that we're going to sin in many cases. That's transgressing. That's going outside of. That's becoming lawless outside of, of God's law. Now, how do I overcome sin? Three, three things that we're going to look at. And you have all, all of the information, so whatever we don't cover, you can take home with you. You, you, you must Think biblically, you must speak biblically, and you must act biblically. And if you do those three things, I promise you, you will come out of sin, and you will be able to avoid it. Because what you're doing is you're applying the antidote, the anti-sermon, ser uh, a serum. If, if you govern yourself by these three principles, it'll keep you walking right. Okay? Your, your actions, your words, your deeds, your thoughts, all of that has to come under subjection. Paul told the Corinthian church to take every thought captive. Sometimes we give ourselves permission to think what we want, and we'll be in fantasy land, and we'll be in la-la land, and we'll be somewhere that is not healthy for us. And then we don't understand why we end up in a situation that we don't want to be in. And it's because we have given ourselves permission to be in a toxic place, to be in an unhealthy place. You know, it, it, it doesn't matter if you're not doing certain things with your body. What's going on in your head? See, that's the battleground. What, you know, what, what's that little mind up to? Okay? And, and so um, we, we want to learn how to think biblically, how to 
um, speak biblically and how to act biblically, meaning according to the word of God. Your light is a lamp unto my path and a, 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 a light unto a light unto my path and a lamp unto my feet. Okay? And, and that was talking um, from the perspective of the ancient Hebrews that, you know, they didn't have street lights and what have you. So if they were traveling at night, they would put lights in their shoes, stick candles out of their shoes. And that light would order their steps. That light would guide their path. And that's what God's word. God's word is the pathway to him. It's, it's that pathway to righteousness and to holiness. We as Westerners, we see the, 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 the law of Moses as something that's condemning, but we have to understand that word law means teachings. And, and what it does is it teaches us how to walk in the glory of God. Okay? So uh, to become aware of the patterns of sin or temptations in regard to this particular problem, make a list of people, places, times, or circumstances where ongoing problems are evident in your life. Okay? I know some of us are so perfect and holy, we just can't think of any evidence or any situation. <laughs> Where we need to come out of sin, or we now I understand that, but for the rest of us, make a list of things in your life that are challenging you from living according to what God wants you to live, or living what's causing you to live beneath your privilege, is what I'm trying to say. You know, you know where the stumbling blocks and the strongholds are in your life. You know, where do you need to be strengthened? So if you first identify that and then own up to it, acknowledge it, then God is able to, to, to work it out for you. But as long as we stay in denial about who we are and what we are, then we're going to stay in that spot. We're going to stay in that place. Okay, let's look at Thinking biblically. First of all, cons consider thoroughly the issue of your salvation. I am saved. I'm born again by the Spirit of God. He is transforming me. He's conforming my will to his will. I've given him permission to have me back. He's entitled to us by creative right. But he has saved us, and now all he wants is for us to give ourselves back to him so that he can do what he wants to do in our lives. So when we give ourselves back to him, we're accepting that salvation. He died for the whole world. Everybody is saved, but are they going to accept it and walk in it? Your ticket has been purchased. Are you going to will car to pick it up? The door to the prison is open. Are you going to get up and walk out? So you consider thoroughly your, the issue of your salvation. Remember that God has promised to care for you in any situation, no matter how unsettling it may seem. It doesn't matter what you're going through. God is saying, I'm there. I know you may be in the fire. We talked about the fiery furnace. I'm there. You may be in the lion's den. I'm there. You may be having a Red Sea experience. I'm there. You may be persecuted for my name's sake. You may be struggling and going through. You, you may be in a season, a, a dry season right now. But I'm there. I have not forsaken you. And even in the midst of the madness and the chaos, I'm still providing for you. Because it could be a whole lot worse. You know, I really did not fully comprehend the impact of the situation, the bombing in Boston. You know, you look at it on the news, but it wasn't anybody that you know, and you know, all of this. So you say, oh wow, and you pray and all that, but it, it, it really doesn't touch you, okay? And this morning when I picked up the paper, I saw a, one of the women who was injured in the bombing who was a dancer and her left foot is gone. 
And, and, and that impacted me. It was like these people's lives have been changed. But guess what? Even with her losing her foot, she had her arms, she had her eyes, she had her life. God was there. Because there were some who didn't make it. And we've got to learn how to see God even in the rubbish, even in the debris, even in the critical times. He's there. Remember that God, through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, has broken Satan's power, and you no longer have to be enslaved by sin. You don't have to pick up that bottle. You don't have to pick up that joint. You don't have to use foul language to express yourself. You don't have to punch people and throw stuff at them in order to get your point across. You, you don't have to manipulate and, and, and act out and control people in order to get your way. You've been freed from that. Confess all sinful thoughts to God and ask for his help in overcoming this sinful pattern. Some folks, if you talk to them long enough, you'll discover that they always talk negatively about everybody. They, they always go negative on you. That's, that's sinful in the eyes of God. So yeah, they, they may do whatever else, you know, and think, well, you know, I'm, 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 I'm perfect in this and that. But guess what? To God, you're not perfect. Okay, yeah, you may be tithing, or you may be at service every time the door is open. You may not have a lover. You may, you, you, you may give to the poor, but the whole time, he's reading your mind. He's monitoring our thoughts. It's, you know, we think because it's not broadcast, and other people don't know, that we're getting away with the negative thinking. Not realizing, the, what does the Bible say? Make melody in your heart unto the Lord. Why? Because he knows our heart. Jesus said, you look at the outward appearance, I look at the heart. It's out of the, 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 um, the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. What's in the heart eventually is going to come out the mouth. We call it Freudian slips. Oh, did I say that out loud? I didn't mean to say that. I don't know where that came from. Your heart. Rejoice and give thanks in and for every situation, knowing that endurance in, in, endurance in trials help conform you to the image of Christ. There's some things that, you know, uh, are, are not going to happen in our lives in terms of maturity and, and pur purifying and purging and, 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 and uh, forging and all of the things that need to take place in us unless we go through the fire. Unless we go through trouble. You know, God knows everything. He knows what we're going to do. Well, the Lord just let that happen because he just wanted to know what I... He, please. David said he knows my downsitting, my uprising, and understands my thoughts are far off. He knows what you're going to do, but you've got to go through the test so that you can know what you're going to do. Well, I thought I, I didn't ever think it that I was... Yeah, well, when you were judging other folks... You didn't realize that it was the grace of God that kept you from going that way. And if you had run into the right person at the wrong time, you'd be in the same situation and may have had your toes in the water and the Lord saw fit to snatch you out. Amen. Amen. So we, we have to... Um, understand that what we go through is what helps to perfect us. It makes us sensitive. It, 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 it opens up our heart. It softens us. You know, we, we are able to become empathetic. We become less critical because we understand how easy it can happen. 
Remember that God's forgiveness of you is the basis for you to forgive others. We talked about that on Sunday. Remember that your love for others demonstrates the love that you have for God. Remember to pray for those who persecute you. And if we go into 1 John, the fourth chapter, that entire chapter talks about the fact that we cannot continue to not love people and say that we are in love with God and that we're in relationship with God because it is not so. If you're in relationship with God, then you should be showing forth the love of God. Focus your thoughts on glorifying and pleasing God and on being a blessing to others in all situations. Within every situation in which you find yourself, do not dwell on things that lead to further sin. Instead, discipline your mind to think on things that please the Lord. See, that's where the battle is. Those who are still struggling in their flesh. I got to have sex. I just got to. I'm sorry. I'm young. My, my hormones are racing. I'm, you know, if, if, if you're looking at folks, at folks, you know, Jesus said to lust after them, then yes, your body's going to respond to what's going on in your mind. That's why I tell kids who are trying to um, live holy and trying to abstain, you cannot do heavy petting and abstain. Because your brain is telling your, your body, your reproductive organs, hey, we got activity going on here. Get ready, get ready. <laughs> Amen. Okay? So, you know, if, if you don't want to to say the wrong thing to people, then you have to stop thinking the wrong thing about people. Because you can get so worked up. Even listening to other people's negativity will work you up, and the next thing you know, you're fighting their battles, you're caught up in their mess because you didn't shut it down. And it's going to come out. It's going to come out. It's called acting, the psychologists call it acting out someone else's impulses. And you, you have master manipulators who will get in someone's ear who's bold and crazy and feed them poison and venom. Yeah, well, you know what? If it was me, blah, 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 I wouldn't do that. I would, nah, 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 you know, they, they, they not treat you right. They'd rather, nah, 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 nah. Here you go. And they're sitting back like, yeah, good, good. I was too big of a coward to say it, but I, I pushed your buttons and got you to say it, and now I don't have to suffer the repercussions you do. Okay? Within every situation in which you find yourself, do not dwell on things that lead to further sin. Instead, discipline your mind to think on things that please God. Think on these things. Because when, when he is, is listening to your heart and, and monitoring what's going on in your mind, you want him to be blessed. You want him to say, oh, she's practicing my presence. She's praising me. She's singing a, a, a song unto me. Even though she's in a hard place right now, even though they're plucking her last nerve and threatening her job every day, she's still humming a song to praise me and to thank me and to bless me and to glorify me. Think of ways to encourage other believers, stimulating them to love and good deeds. So, you know, there are going to be times when we all have those moments you know, Pastor Johnny and I, we, we laugh, we get tickled when we're going through difficult times. You know, we'll call each other and say, I don't want to hear no scripture right now. I know scripture. I need to vent. So I don't want to hear Jesus loves me. Just let me say this. We all have those times when we're, we're, we need encouragement. And so as believers, as members of the family of God, we have to 
arm and equip ourselves so that we're able to bless and speak life and build up each other. To encourage each other to do the right thing. Because as Christians, we don't always want to do the right thing. I was listening to Joyce Meyer this morning, and um, I sort of came in on it, but apparently she was talking about um, someone had did something to her child. And she said, she, 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 she thought to herself, well, today is not going to be a good Christian day. <laughs> you all know how we are about our children. It doesn't matter how old they are. They could be 89 years old. You messing with my baby? So every now and then you need to have somebody that you can call and say, look, I'm getting ready to do, do something that's not going to honor God. Talk to me. Talk me off this ledge. So we think biblically. We speak biblically. Confess your current sins to the Lord and to those whom you have failed to love in a biblical manner. Wow, do we need to pull out our cell phones? Does everybody, should I take a break and let everybody call at least one person and say, I saw thee. That's, that's what a, a Dick and Stratford does when he does something like burn up stuff. He sets off the fire alarm every day, but he be in that kitchen slinging. He still thinks he's a short order cook from back in the day. So when they say they were burning, he was burning. <laughs> and he'll mess my pots up. And then I'll just look at him. He goes, I Sally. <laughs> so every now and then we, we need to make that call and say, I Sally. In, including sins of failing to fulfill your responsibilities. Confess, confess past sins that you have failed to confess earlier. What does the word of God say? That he's faithful and just to forgive us. All we have to do is confess it. We cannot perpetrate with God. He desires truth in the inward parts. Isn't that what the word says? I mean, he knows us. He wants us to be transparent. He wants us to come to him and say, Father, please forgive me. You know, I let you down. I, didn't, I wasn't excellent in, in my work. I shirked on my responsibilities. I, I should have uh, been more kind or gentle with that, in that situation. Or I, I should have been more sensitive toward him or her. Or, you know, for what they were going through or whatever. You know, just learn how to confess your sins. Do not speak about your past accomplishments. And, you know, being bragging or, or boastful, your, your sorrows or your defeats, worries about the, the future, comparing yourself to yourself and or to others, or boastfully promising what you will do in the future. Um, that's why, I remember, there, there's a, a story in the Bible. Jesus uh, gives a parable, parable about a man who was very successful in his harvest. And he, he didn't stop to give God thanks. You know, he just talked about what he was going to do next. You know, and, 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 and God took his life from him. Who do you think you are? You know, it's me that gives you the power to get wealth. You know, how dare you take my glory? So um, uh, when we speak, uh, and we're speaking biblically, that means we're not bragging, we're not boasting. And then we're not being uh, shamefaced it either and downing ourselves because we have to understand I'm the handiwork of God. And, you know, I know some folks who like to just make fun of people and talk about people and, you know, what's wrong with them. And, you know, oh, look, 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 look at him. Look at, you know, he's got a knot on his forehead. Oh, look at her. What's, she's got legs like a stick. Oh, look at, you know, and not realizing that that's God's masterpiece. That's God's creation. The city's not on fire out there, is it? Okay, good. You think it's someone's fireplace? Okay. Is my fireplace on, Doc? <laughs> we should be good. <laughs> okay? So when we look at other people, we have to understand 
God made them the way that he did for a reason. The same way he made us the way he did for a reason. So when we stand in the mirror and say, Lord, how come I, got, I have my mother's nose? I'm one of my daddy's nose. Lord, why didn't you shape me like this? Lord, why didn't you do that? When he deliberately took his time and shaped us and fashioned us and said, wow, that's good. I like that. That's what God said when he made you. And when you came out into the world, he was popping his collar. So we've, we've got to learn, okay? Do not slander, gossip quarrel or use words that do not edify others. And, you know, you all have all of the scriptures, so I'm, I'm not taking time to go through them. Um, it says, instead, let your speech be truthful and gracious, speaking the truth in love, okay, according to the need of the moment that you may know how to answer each person person. I believe that you can say anything that needs to be said as long as you do it diplomatically, if it needs to be said. See, there are times when you need to just leave it alone, let it go, revisit it later, wait for the Lord to give you the perfect moment. You know, that's one of the things that I, I tell younger women. Um, you know, be, there are certain things you can say to your husband at the right moment. But if you say it to him at, at the cookout, at Big Mama's house, in the middle of the electric slide, you're going to have a problem. Why? Because his ego's going to be bruised. You said that to me in front of everybody? No, you should have waited on, until the ride home and then addressed it, you know? So timing is everything in the kingdom of God. Timing is everything in our daily lives as Christians, asking for wisdom. James said, if you don't have wisdom, then ask God for it. Lord, you know, I can be a little dense sometimes, so just give me the, 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 the understanding of of when to use what I've got. Encourage reconciliation. No, let's go back to D. Do not bring up another sin in an accusing or vengeful manner, either to others, yourself, or to the person who has sinned. Well, wow, that just cuts off a lot of gossip right there, doesn't it? That, that just breaks that right on off and, and throws it away. What did God say? I put, I put your sins, I cast your sins behind my back. Love covers a multitude of sins. What does that mean? That I've sinned more than once, and God's put that thing behind his back. Not only can he not see it, but guess what? You can't see it either. What would happen if the Lord just, just put us on blast and exposed us? What if one, one, one Sunday we came in here thinking we was going to get our shot on and the heavens opened and God said, you, you down there in the turquoise and, and, and the green and the blue stripes. What was that I heard in your mind coming up the steps that you said about Sister Shaniqua? You in the blue polka dots. Shall I tell them where you were yesterday? This morning? I mean, what if, what if God exposed us? Now, it's going to be exposed at the end time. But I don't think we're ready for it to be shouted from the rooftops right now. Because there's some things we've done on this side of the cross that we really don't want folks to know about. Well, you know, back in the day. That was, yeah, but no, let's talk about in this day. 
God is still casting your sins behind his back. He's still covering you. And so, because we're supposed to be giving the love of God to the world, that's what's going to draw them. We are supposed to reflect him to the world, then we should be covering them. They should not, the world should not come in here and see a battleground. We got a gang over here and a gang over there. And depending on what side you sit on, it determines what you hear. When people are coming in, they're looking for salvation, looking for the love of God, they, they, they want a break. They've been out in the world on that battlefield all of their lives, and the Lord has moved them to the point where they say, what must I do to be saved? And then they sit behind the seasoned saints, the leaders, the gifted, the anointed, and hear, <laughs> And that's why we lose a lot of folks. They come in and they go out. They're like, no, no, I, I know how to fight in the street. I'm not dealing with this stuff. Questions, comments? Thinking biblically, what do you have to say about it? How challenging is it to focus your thoughts on glorifying and pleasing God and on being a blessing to others in all situations? In all situations. How challenging is that? Extremely. All situations. Meaning it's, it's not just when I'm in this setting and environment that I can please God and I'm careful about what I say. But no matter where I am, whether I'm around the people of God or not, because you never know who knows the Lord. Everybody's not walking around with their chest stuck out and a collar on. Amen. Everybody's not speaking in tongues at the, at, at, at the DMV. <laughs> Carrying big Bibles and have wrapped up in prayer shawls. What about speaking biblically? Is it difficult to confess your sins? First of all, you know what? First of all, to yourself. To yourself. Looking yourself in the mirror and saying, you know, you are really, what the kids say now, ratchet. You're really ratchet. And then, having to tell the Lord, I'm ratchet today. Not only do I need you to forgive me, but I need you to work this thing out of me. And then going back and saying, that was ratchet that I did to you. And I'm sorry. Forgive me. I'm under a lot of pressure right now. I should not have responded the way that I did. I'm working on, on having healthy responses. You know, a while ago we talked about putting equal value on events and responses. And sometimes when we keep things inside of us, we'll have a $500 response to a $5 situation. And that, that leaves people standing there going, what was that? <laughs> what was that about? All I did was ask her if she, she, she wanted Pepperidge Farm or uh, uh, Miss Annie's cookies. And the next thing I knew, she was talking about my mama. 
Next thing I knew, he was telling me that my daddy wasn't no good. Over cookies. Okay, since you all are not going to help me, you're intrigued. Don't even try it. <laughs> What's he doing to you back there? Some extra cookies. <laughs> Do we have any questions from uh, our online family? Yeah, okay. Act biblically. Okay. Thinking, speaking, and acting biblically. Can you all see how if we practice these three principles, it's going to bring us into another level and another place? Identify all danger signals. Um, in, in, in drug world, it's your triggers. Situations, places, times, and personal contacts that bring temptation. Now, you, you, you and Ray Ray may have been hanging out for years. And, and y'all, you, you know that aside from the fact that He's a thief, a liar, and a murderer. He's a good dude. You can, you, you, you know, you know he's got, he's got your back. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You know he's thorough. And so here you've gotten saved, but you realize that every time Ray Ray come around, you end up in trouble. Okay, so you have to recognize that. And take immediate steps to eliminate, flee, or resist the temptation. So that may mean you telling Ray Ray, I'm a little busy right now. So, you know, we're, we're, you're going to have to give me some space. I love you, dude. If you need anything, you know I'm there for you. But right now, I just can't do this. If you know that, that every time Billy Bob pull up and offer you a ride is in a stolen car, you know, come on, he doesn't have a driver's license and he doesn't have a job, so why is he off taking you to the bus stop in a Cadillac? You, you've got to look at and identify. Let's talk about even the shopping addiction. You, you've got to know when that thing is building. The shopaholics know what I'm talking about. It's just like any other addiction. It, you, it, 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 you start feeling this, this need to release. And then you, of course, you've got that person who's going to call you and let you know, Lord Taylor's got that sale going on, girl. And something inside you is going to think, okay, where's the money? Where's the money? Where's the money? Oh, I got a car note over here. Well, you know what? I can believe the Lord for the car note. And go ahead. <laughs> We've got to learn to identify that thing. You, you have to get to a point where you realize that you cannot window shop in Annapolis Mall and think you're not going to buy anything if you've got a problem. If you can't window shop, if you, even if you wake up and you got the heebie-jeebies, you got that thing all over, it's just speaking to you, calling your name. If you know you're in that season, you cannot turn on the Home Shopping Network when they've got six easy value pays. When you can buy anything and take six months to pay for it. Praise break. You have to learn how to identify these situations, places, times, and personal contacts that bring the temptation. Halt all activities, cut off all contacts, stop all associations, and destroy all items and paraphernalia which have to do with the particular sin that has enslaved you. Those of, of, of I'll say you to keep it generic. I won't say us. No, vice versa. Those of us who have been, um, I can't say blessed, who have experienced 
sugar daddies. Don't say it, Pastor. Please don't say it. I don't want to get rid of that necklace. I've got a whole box full of diamonds, rubies, and pearls. I'm, li- I'm sleeping in the bedroom set and, 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 and sitting on the sofa. Oh, don't say I got to get rid of everything that Big Daddy gave me. But what happens every time you get broke? Ding! Big Daddy comes up in the back of your head. Well, maybe I can just call him and say hi. See how he's doing. Maybe I can let him know I need help, but let him know I'm saved now, so I can't do nothing. Maybe I'll just meet him for happy hour. Just so we can catch up. Every time you put that fur coat on your back, it's like, ah, yes. What? Y'all man, never got no fur coats? <laughs> Does that mean I, gotta, I have to sell my house? says, you know, it's, it's, it's recommended that you, as much as you can, get rid of those things that enslave you, that keeps you falling backwards, that keeps you wanting to, to go back to that thing. That old marijuana clip that they, you keep in, in your keepsake drawer from back in 1969. Get rid of it. (laughs) Digga Johnny, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. That bong that you're saying is just for decorations. You all all right? (laughs) Question? Come on, come on, come on. Microphone, Microphone, we've got people listening. You know, sometimes your kryptonite call you. And you don't have to call your kryptonite. And sometimes your kryptonite send you packages. So what you supposed to do? Good question. So if, 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 let's put it in English. So if he's calling you and, and sending you money and things, what are you supposed to do? We want to conduct ourselves in a way that honors God. And even though it's, it's just between you and him or you and her or whatever the situation is, you're holding that person in a place where they can't move on and grow as well. Because if he knows he can always call you, he'll keep calling you. But if you say, I have really, my life has really been enriched by my relationship with you, you know, enriched. Or, I mean, you know, some folks have had experiences where, you do have those people who every now and then are going to say, are you all right? You know? But you have to let them know there's no room here anymore for you. Because if you keep that door open, you're going to walk back in it. And I know mentally it's a safety net, knowing that you got, you know, Billy Bob and JoJo and, 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 and Omar, Elma. And, and Janice, you know, you know that they're back there. And so you don't want to throw away the black book. You, you don't want to throw away the SIM card. <laughs> you you, you want to know in your flesh, I've got someone to rescue me. 
But, but what's it saying? God, you're not enough. You're not enough, Lord. I, I know you're my provider, but just in case you fail, I got Elmer Fudd over here. And I'm going to tickle his fancy just enough to keep him hanging on the vine. But what we're doing is we're keeping them in that place. They need to be released as well to say, that season of my life is over. I thank you for everything you did, but I don't live like that anymore. And I know it's tough because that's a lifestyle. Developing the type of lifestyle and living the type of lifestyle for years where you could depend on other folks taking care of you that's a hard thing to walk away from. Everybody wasn't living in a shelter and homeless. Some folk had to leave some good stuff. That's why I told you all before, I love that picture of the woman standing with the mink coat hanging off of her shoulders, looking at the cross like, I got to do this. Because what I'm leaving behind is nothing compared to what's calling me. Okay. Anyone else? <laughs> uh, have a question. Well, it's kind of food for thought. <clears throat> it's about your thoughts. And um, for us, I always call it special doctors, but any psychiatrist will tell you, no matter how much medicine they prescribe to you, it would never take away your negativity. It will decrease your anxiety. But unless you have a relationship with God, or unless you're doing something outside of it, your thought pattern will never change. Your anxiety will never decrease unless you have any kind of outside effect. So I'm not downing any psychiatrist, but that's just a fact. So just think about it for a minute. So they're saying that you need something external outside of yourself in order to change your thoughts. And that's called the Holy Spirit. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your thinking has to trans transform. When your thinking transforms, then your speaking transforms. And then you're able to act. The B clause of, of B says, quickly fill the many voids created by putting off the old ways with a vigorous plan of living righteously, putting on the new ways. And that's one of the things that... Um, I learned in singlehood in Christendom and that I encourage um, with singles, and, and, and Paul talks about it too, that you, you stay busy. If, if you're just going to hang around and, and, and lick your wounds and mo moan and groan and, oh, he's got somebody, she's got somebody, how come I don't have anybody? What's wrong with me? Lord, don't you love me? No, I can't come to Bible study because I'm grieving over the fact that I ain't got nobody. <laughs> and we, we get caught up in that. We get, Lord, I don't want to talk to you till you send me somebody. When you send me somebody, then I can act right, then I can live holy. But until then, I'm going to do what I want to do. Spend much time with other believers and wholeheartedly put on the full armor of God in order to stand firm against the devil. Forgive others just as God has forgiven you. Memorize scripture verses and study scripture passages specifically related to facing and dealing with this particular problem. Especially memorize verses that tell of the overcoming power that is yours in Christ Jesus. If you have a problem with gossiping, then you pull up all of the gossiping scriptures. If you have a problem with, with, with lying, then you pull up all the lying scriptures. If you have a problem with evil thinking, then you pull up all of the evil thinking scriptures. If you have a problem with your finance, then you pull up all of the finance scriptures. And finally, make amends for wrongdoing and seek reconciliation with those you have offended. Remember that although you have already confessed your sins, 
you need to demonstrate actively your serious intent to change. So you just can't say, well, you know, forget them, the heck with it, it is what it is, I'm moving on, they need to move on, they need to, you know, get over it. If you have, still have access to people and you know that you've been wrong, then you need to go to them and say, I'm sorry. And it's not, if I have. And it's not, I'm sorry, but you should not have. No, I'm sorry, I was wrong, boom, leave it there. Okay, yes, please. That statement uh, jogged a uh, question that Pastor Tony asked. Suppose the person that you need to ask forgiveness is passed away. And I wanted to share um, about my mom. Her uncle had said something to her, and she held um, unforgiveness in her heart for a long time, and he had passed away. She was starting to dream about him. So I believe God was sending him in her dreams so that she could get that unforgiveness out of her heart. And the last time she dreamt about him, um, she was trying to reach him, but he disappeared. But she knew then that God wanted her to forgive him, even though he had passed away a long, long, long time ago. And she did, because I believe that unforgiveness was going to stop her from getting to see him face to face. But she did. So I think God allowed it to keep happening, keep happening, until she released it out of her heart. So um, you can forgive those who have um, deceased. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we, we've, we've learned on Sunday, and that's a topic that we co constantly, you know, talk about, that, unforgive, that uh, forgiving folks really releases you. It, it doesn't affect them whether you forgive them or not. Amen. It, it doesn't affect them. If you know that there's someone who's got a thing um, against you, does it bother you? No, that's their stuff. But once you release what you're holding in your heart against someone else, then it frees you up. Okay? And I got a, a, a tremendous response from you all about the message on Sunday, the power of forgiveness. And one of the things that several of you said was the hardest problem was to forgive myself. That, that was the hardest task, was to, to, to be honest about the guilt and the shame that I was feeling that I brought on myself, that I caused myself. And so we need to start there. Because if we can't forgive ourselves, then we're not capable of forgiving anyone else. Amen? Okay. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs>